I've been channeling my inner Harry Redknapp. Yeah, well, you know, we've got some good talented boys there, good talented boys. I, I, I'll see what I can do in the window. I've been searching around, I've been hunting around, I've upended my wife's drawers. <laughs> never know what you might get in the in the old transfer window, do you? <laughs> no, you never know. Never. Never, never. <laughs> but you never know what might turn up. I've been rooting around everywhere I can find. I've been rooting around down the back of the sofa. I've found a few bob, you know. We'll see where we can spend it. Yep, I've been busy. On today's episode, we've got the majority of our summer transfer business for you. And we get to see how they perform in the first three games of the season. I had an awful lot on my mind at the end of the last episode. We had the whole dust up with Trossard. Mm -hmm. We had a squad clearly lacking in some areas. And I needed to bring a sense of direction to a side that's lost two managers in the space of about three months. So it's time to dust ourselves off, don the iconic orange suit, get cracking. Here we go. So people are on the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now. Shit! See that? He must have a foot like a traction and can you hear me? Maggie you boys took the hell of a beat. Before we get going, I just want to thank those of you who watched the first video. It was my first ever YouTube video and it seems to have gone down really well. Thank you all so much for watching and I'm so glad you've come back for the second episode. If you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel, if you'd like the video, if you'd comment in it, whatever you can do, it's really helpful to me. I'm new to all this. Thank you very much to the commenters on YouTube, social media, Discord. You've really made me laugh this week. It's been very good. Here's a few of my favourites. I will say, having watched it back, I feel like I say useful and handy. Far too much. Very, very useful. Very handy. Very, very useful. Very handy. Uh, very useful. Pretty useful. Very, very handy. Very, very useful. Um, yeah, super handy. Very useful. Looks very handy. Could be useful. It's super handy. He'll come in handy. He'll be useful. Uh, very useful. So without further ado, here's the transfer business I've done thus far. Okay, so first up, the big news. Trossard is out. We've got rid of him. I'm hoping this will make a bit of a statement to the rest of the team that, you know, if you speak out, if you start being a bit arsy, there's the door. All right, mate, there's the door. Twenty-one and a half million pounds. I mean, he was in his final year of his contract. No chance of renewing it. Better off without negative people like that in, in the side. He can go. Fuck you, Trossard. I found that I can sort my team by aggression. So let's just say I'll be considering that when we get to the Spurs game. So in terms of ins, here's the first. Sheldrup. 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 Andreas Sheldrup, the Norwegian 18-year-old. I've started offering just a small amount up front and then three 12-month instalments. So I've done that with quite a few of my transfers this window and it's meant my transfer budget can go an awful lot further. 4.9 million up front, rising to nine. And I think that's a bargain. And that's the real deal. He seems to be this game's renowned wonder kid. Five stars, potential rating. All the stats in the right places. He likes to cut inside from that left wing. He can also help us out up front. A perfect replacement, really, for Trossard, I think. He's the name on everybody's lips. Sheldrup. Sheldrup. The name on everyone's lips. So it turns out I was so triggered by Leandro Trossard's behaviour that I've also signed another left winger, stroke centre forward, and that is Marcos Leonardo. We got him for 13.75 million, and... Annoyingly, his rating's gone down since I signed him. He's now gone down to four and a half potential ability. He's got decent stats for a centre forward already. He's considered a poacher. So in many ways, I've signed two of the same kind of player. But what's actually wrong with having two of the same kind of player? And moreover, f*** you, Trossard. 
So, do you remember what I said about needing cover for Lamptey at right back? Well, I've kind of signed two left backs instead. So I've rolled the dice and just gone for Arana here. Firstly, because he was cheap. Secondly, because he wanted to come. And thirdly, look at him. He's brilliant. I know I said I was happy with Purvis' stupid Yan. Arana's actually better all round. Not quite as quick. Not quite as good in the air, but generally better in every area. He can also play left wing as well if we needed him to. Because not got enough left wingers, evidently. 16.25 million, which I think is a bit of a bargain for a player of this level. He's 25 years of age. I think this is a really good shout. So I've also signed another left back. <laughs> this is Robert Skov. He's much more of a utility player. He can play basically anywhere on the pitch. If anyone remembers Stephen Reed from Championship Manager 0102, it's a little bit that sort of situation. We managed to get him for 18.25 million, which I think is about right. He's a left sided player who can play on the right. In fact, he's naturally a right winger. My aim is to kind of train him so that his right back ability is okay. Hopefully he can then help provide a little bit of cover for Lamptey, but he is left footed. So I don't know. He just looked really good. And I again, I don't regret it, but it's going to be a challenge keeping everyone happy this year, I think. What are we doing about right back then? Well, I think this is a stroke of genius. We'll see. But I'm going to retrain Solly March. I've already started. He's currently got a competent rating. He normally plays on the right, even though he's left-footed again. He normally plays as a right winger. I think overall, with Lamptey, with Skov, and with March, that's all the cover we need at right back, really. In addition to having Veltman as well, who can also play there. So you remember when I said I don't need any centre-backs? <laughs> well, I've signed another one. <laughs> This is Josip Sutalo, and we got him for £20 million, but it was £5 million up front and then £15 million over the subsequent three years. Oh, it's a Bobby Dazzler. And the only reason I've gone for him is because I couldn't not. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Look at him. He's got everything you need. 22 years of age, six foot three. He's probably our best defender now. I can see him and Lewis Dunk forming a really good partnership together. Don't forget, we've also got Adam Webster. We've also got Van Hecker, both of whom look excellent. I'm sorry, all right. I'm sorry. I had to get him. I had to get him. So you'll remember I said I'm a bit thin in defensive midfield. Well, I found an absolute bargain here. Three and a half million quid for Roberto Gagliardini. So he's 28 years old. Absolute midfield general. Look at that. Breaking up the play. Tackling work rate he's got kind of everything you want in there but he's also got a little bit of finesse he can pass he's a team player experienced bargain at three and a half million quid from inter it turns out i'm a bit of a hoarder it seems <laughs> i've gone for another defensive midfielder in renato tapia we've signed him for 7.75 million pounds a little bit like uh, gagliardini he's got the work rate he's got the tackling he's got the natural fitness he's got the stamina the strength the positioning concentration, anticipation, all the good stuff you want in that position. But also, like Gagliardini, he's got the passing, he's got the technique, he's got the finesse. He's six foot one, so he's got a bit of a presence about him as well. He can also play centre-back as well, so he's more cover at centre-back if we needed it. What this potentially does is free up the option of selling a defender if I need some money. I've also got myself a bit of cover for Alexis McAllister, I really like the fact that McAllister's got this tackling in addition to his offensive attributes that he can use in that attacking midfield role because we're using that high press. But if something happens to McAllister, we're very thin on the ground. So by adding Sasa Lukic in here, who cost us £10 million, which was £5 million up front and then £5 million spread over three subsequent years, I think we're doing very well here. It's a slightly more defensive version of Alexis McAllister. Pretty similar in terms of the attributes that they cover. He's slightly more defensive. Someone can win the ball really high up the pitch and maintain pressure. That's a, the perfect role there. He's not going to be a starter, but he's got everything I need to occupy that role when Alexis isn't available. I think this is a sensible move, if not a particularly sexy one. So, as we all know, I'm not Danny Welbeck's biggest fan.
But it turns out he's pretty happy at Brighton and he's very keen to stay and would be extremely angry if I tried to get rid of him. We've already had the drama with Trossard. I don't need more aggro in my opening days in the job. So I've decided to keep him around. If it turns out that he's as shit as I think he is, he'll naturally get upset and he can just make his own way out and that's fine. It did mean that we needed another striker though. And I've stumbled across this guy who I've never heard of before, Ludovic Arioke. And he is, to borrow a phrase from one of my friends, an absolute wardrobe of a man. Look at these stats. He's got finishing, heading, jumping, balance, strength, work rate, bravery. He's going to really put his heart on the line for the side. He's 28 years old. Most importantly, he's six foot six. What an absolute unit. He's not the sort of striker I'd normally go for. I'd normally go for someone with a bit of pace, you know, getting in behind the lines, all that sort of thing. And that's really what the formation's geared for. But this is a different option. And I'm intrigued to see how it works. It cost us £7.75 million from Strasbourg. He's not been a prolific goal scorer, but my theory is that he's just not at the service. <laughs> I've got hope for Ludovic Arioke. So here's the total business thus far in the summer. We're still only on the 6th of August, so there's plenty of time to go yet. I've spent all my budget for the moment, so any more cash out needs to be raised by player sales. Unfortunately, many of the players that I want to get rid of are desperate to stick around and they're not happy to leave. So the minute I try and transfer list someone, they just get very upset at the thought of it. And then I, I back down because I'm a nice guy. The one player I have successfully transfer listed and he was up for it was Mitoma. I feel bad getting rid of him after what I said in the previous episode. He's just not anything like the other options we've got. No, no takers at the moment, but we'll see how that goes. There's interest in a few of our players and I'm not sure I'm happy for any of them to leave. Robert Sanchez here uh, is wanted by Leicester. Lewis Dunk is wanted by Wolves. Joel Veltman is wanted by Everton and Wolves. And Adam Webster is wanted by Wolves. Wolves are desperate for a centre-back, it seems. If we can get £39 million for Adam Webster, I'd consider it. Similarly, I would never want Lewis Dunk to go, but £36 million for a 30-year-old, I'd entertain it. Veltman, again, £27 to £29 million for another 30-year-old. Again, maybe I'd consider it. I don't know. The future is Sotalo, so uh, watch this space. So let's take a look at the upcoming fixtures for the season. We've got Nottingham Forest imminently, followed by Newcastle a week later, Leicester the following Friday. It turns out Steve Cooper, the manager of Nottingham Forest, is throwing a bit of shade our way. He was asked by journalist Bobby Walker, Brighton have been widely tipped to struggle to avoid relegation. Can you see them surviving? Steve jumps in with... I'm struggling to work out quite how they do it, unfortunately. They just don't look strong enough. Has he seen what we've been doing this summer? Nottingham Forest await. Two-time Champions League winners under Brian Clough, or Cluffy, as he's colloquially known. The Nottingham Forest I remember also featured many individuals with E appended to their name. Not only Cluffy, you had Piercy, Woney, Stoney, Jason Lee, iconic team of the 90s, Nottingham Forest. This season, having just been promoted, they've signed £127 million worth of players with only £5 million leaving the club. That's a significant investment. They are not pissing around. So this is the side I've picked. I've made a bit of a boo-boo. <laughs> I've realised I've only got one goalkeeper. <laughs> so we'd better hope nothing happens to Sanchez or we're stuck with Jason Steele. Jason Steele? In goal, Skov makes a debut at left back. Dunk and Sotalo are our partnership. I think they're my strongest two. Lamptey on the right. Caicedo, and I've gone for Tapia. We've got Schled Scheldrup on the left wing. Alexis McAllister in the middle. Solly March on the right. And up top, I've gone for the big guy, the unit. Are you okay? Jeff Crooks from Sporting Life. Jeff says, you're about to make your managerial debut. Can you sum up your feelings on an occasion like this? 
Not really. I'm actually quite nervous. <laughs> I'm going to leave everyone with a bit of hope. I'm going to say I've had plenty of time to think and prepare. And now I'm ready to go out and do what I came here to do. Win football matches. Jeff says, how important will it be to score first here? It's always important to score goals, Jeff. What's wrong with you? Are you hopeful of a performance today? Jeff, come on, mate. You got yourself a cushy job at Sporting Life, but you can't get away with this level of questioning. This is abysmal. Am I hopeful of a performance? What do you think? I hope for a performance in every match like everyone else, Jeff. Well, after putting Jeff down like that, it's time for the game. I'm very nervous. <laughs> I've never done this in public before. This is weird. Here we go. Let's kick off. Come on, boys. Go on, get into him. Get into him. Lewis Dunk mopping it up. Lovely. Caicedo into Schlederup. Shell. Oh! Sheldrup. <laughs> They've gone for the 7 0 2 1 formation that was favoured by Roberto De Zerbi there. Old Steve Cooper. Just playing it long. 127 million they spend, they just knock it long. Are you okay? I'm fucking great, mate. <laughs> Lovely ball from Schledrup. Sheldrup. Schle Sheldrup. Are you okay? Tucks it in. We've made it to half time. Nervy game, that. But you can see we're dominating. Nine shots, two of which on target. Vastly better XG. Whew, come on, boys. Let's get a result. Are you okay again? <laughs> I knew it. I knew this would be a great signing. Who needs Danny Welbeck? Nobody. Solly March, lovely corner. And it's Sutalo with the little head on. And are you okay? Could it be a debut hat trick? Alexis there, running the show. It's a pen. It's possibly a pen. We need to make sure he's our penalty taker. Are you okay to take the penalty? It's a hat-trick on his debut! It's a hat-trick on his debut! Are you okay? Danny Welbeck gets his chance. And we'll give Billy Gilmore a, uh, a run-out too. Oh, my word! Sheldrup! A stunning goal. Solly March here. Picks out McAllister beautifully. Shuffles it along. Sheldrup with a calm, composed finish into the corner. March. Look at that. Lovely switch to Arana there. Sheldrup. Marcos Leonardo into Welbeck and he's fluffed it. Of course he has. It's Danny Welbeck, isn't it? He's fluffed it. Billy Gill. Danny Welbeck. You're so wasteful, Welbeck. <laughs> what a result that is. Thought I was going to be sick then for a second. <laughs> oh, look who's come crawling out the woodwork now. It's Tyler Dunn from BBC Sussex. Your team suffered a humiliating defeat to Brighton. And the supporters are far from happy. What is your reaction to the result, Steve Cooper? Still see us struggling, do you? Still see us struggling to stay up? Cooper was assertive in response, pointing a finger. <laughs> it was a poor performance and a poor result. We'll certainly be working on some of our mistakes, giving us no praise whatsoever. Steve Cooper, f*** you. And as if by magic... Robert Sanchez, my only goalkeeper of any class whatsoever, is injured. Newcastle is up tomorrow, so I'm going to have to play him regardless. Jason Steele. Jason Steele will be making it onto the bench this time. So Newcastle next up. This is the side that I've gone for. Uh, Sanchez plays despite being injured. Arana gets the nod at left back this time. Galliardini gets his first start. Robert Skov moves to right wing this time. I was going to give Marcos Leonardo a shot, but I'm sticking with Ayorke. Okay, how could I not after a hat trick in his debut? Here he is again. <laughs> Jeff Crooks from Sporting Life. Jeff asks today, how will you look to build on an impressive performance last time out against Nottingham Forest? And of course, it turns out the only response to a Jeff Crooks question is a bleeding obvious one. We're on to the next match now, Jeff. <laughs> Newcastle United. Go on, Schleder up. Shelder up. McAllister! He's tucked it away! Love that. Wins it back, having lost it off Shah. McAllister, what composure. Go on, get into him, get into him. Oh, oh dear, I don't like this, Almiron. 
Oh, Galliardini, what are you doing? That hurts. That's Galliardini's fault. Lamped into Caicedo. Shell drop! What a finish! Look at this little floated, dinked ball. A volley from Sheldrop. Cushioned volley. What a half. Blimey. Galliardini mopping up. That's more like it. That's what we wanted from him. Oh, and Skov! Goldeskov! 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 Amazing. Gold is gold. 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 Manchester 1, señor La Torre, 0 para el Liverpool. Lo hizo Paul's goal. Okay, Almiron's free in there. Joe Linton, don't let Joe Linton score against you for fuck's sake. Never like to see it when they take a tumble in the box. Dodgy keep up, Gilmore. Oh. Are you okay with his fourth of the season? This is Erling Haaland numbers now. Very sluggish from Lukic here, but look at this. Determination to win it back. Whips it in for Ayolke. Need to stop pronouncing it like that. Danny Welbeck, what can he do? What can he do? This is his big moment. Oh! Galliardini. I resent that Welbeck's got an assist for this. Bog standard pass. Galliard, look at that. Oh, what a result. Newcastle will not believe that they have lost that 5-1 away. Leicester City is the next game. I've gone for generally unchanged side. Webster comes in at centre-back just because I feel like he needs a game. I've replaced Caicedo with Tapia. And the rest of the side remains the same. Here he is again. <laughs> it's Jeff Crooks of Sporting Life. How much will you be expecting from Robert Scoff out there? Another heavy night, was it, Jeff? <laughs> Jeff, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Jeff says, there are some concerns that Adam Webster may not be sharp enough for the rigours of this match. Can you say anything about that? Well, Jeff, you seem to be more knowledgeable about his fitness than I am, so why are you asking me? <laughs> Here we go. Title winners a few years ago under Ranieri. Dilly ding, dilly dong. Dilly ding, dilly dong. <laughs> Top of the league going into the game. Oh dear, you've left it wide open there. Oh dear. Oh dear, Jamie Vardy. Come on, boys, we regroup now. Sheldrop, it's a Yorkie again! Five goals this season already in three games. A Yorkie. Sheldrop is the one who makes things happen. Who needs f***ing Trossard? F*** you, Trossard. Who needs Trossard when you've got Sheldrop? And a Yorkie. A born finisher. Half time at the King Power. Oh, no. Galliardini, I bought you for your experience and you're being so naive. He's giving away a penalty in the last game. This game, it's a red card. Okay, the pendulum has very much swung here during this game. But, again, dominant performance, really. We do not deserve to draw this game. We should be winning this. Just, uh, Galliardini's let us down here. I thought he was going to be such a bargain. Turns out, he's just a f***er. <laughs> well, we leave it today with Brighton and Hove Albion, top of the English Premier League, albeit having played a game more than everybody else. Two emphatic wins, one very unlucky draw. Coming up, we've got Burnley in the Carabao Cup second round, followed by the old enemy, Crystal Palace. It's great to have such a good start to the season. Let's hope it continues. Well, I'm exhausted after that. I'm blown away by the start to the season. Went far better than I could have hoped. Are you okay? is quite the signing i'm super happy with him thank you all for watching i really appreciate it while you're here 
please hit the like button, the subscribe button, comment. Let me know your favourite ever football manager or championship manager player. Let me know what you make of the decisions I'm making, if I'm making any massive boo-boos, if there's any players you can recommend that I take a look at. And join me next time as we really get stuck into the season and get a good few games under our belt. New episodes come out every Saturday morning from 11am UK time. Thank you all very, very much for watching. I love you. Chin chin.